Hi, my name is Jason Lam. I'm a principal instructor at the Sense Institute. In this video, I'd like to talk about the path traversal vulnerability, a class of vulnerability that is becoming very common across web applications, APIs, and also we're seeing that in the security appliance space where the security appliance have uh, administrative interface in the web area as well. Um, we'll also cover how do you avoid this particular vulnerability in your application as well. Let us first define what the vulnerability is about first. So path traversal can occur in your applications where your application actually take in user input. For example, it can be in a form field inside a web app or it can be in a URL query string where, you know, for example, the question mark, a, you know, file name equals whatever the file name is, uh, that input is taken in by your application and then your application process certain operations inside the file system. So taking in the file name and rendering something inside the file system with that file name. That is where this vulnerability can occur. Where, how it occur is that your attacker are clever enough to figure out certain string pattern, such as your dot, dot, slash. For those of you who knows about a file system, probably know that the dot, dot, slash basically means that you are going up one directory level. That's what you're referencing. So by doing the dot dot slash dot dot slash or dot you know in some cases it's the dot dot backslash right depending on the operating system, you're able to go up the directory path to go to other areas of the file system that the that the uh, application developer did not intend for the application to actually reach. Okay, so using those string combination the attacker is able to traverse the entire file directory and basically free roam in that sense. Okay, so that's really how the path traversal vulnerability can potentially occur and how, does, how it actually works. Here is a simple example. In green, you can see that it has a uh, very typical example.com example, you know, where it calls a download script and calling on a file report.pdf. So what is going on here is, again, very typical. You're trying to download a file that happens to be report.pdf. Um, this download script would probably grab the file at a file location, uh, a file directory called report.pdf and hand it over to the user, right? So that's what the operation could look like. But then if you look at a red, right? Like the red is with dot dot slash dot dot slash, right? Again, dot dot slash goes up one directory, two directory level above, and then come back down at SC password. How it works, it, or what it looks like is over here, right? You have probably, you know, a, how it started is this report.pdf is this directory, the public directory is where this report is actually uh, being located. When you do the first dot dot slash over here, right, then it goes up to the web root. The second dot dot slash basically goes all the way up to the root directory level. And then what goes up must come down back into the etc directory. Okay, and then you can call the password file from there. If you're wondering, hey, how would an attacker actually know that, wait, what is this etc directory? That directory always exists in a Unix file system, right? Those are the typical standard directory pattern. Um, and the password file is just the, you know, where is storing the username. And in some cases, you know, some of the information about the user and all the password information as well. So that's basically how this attack could look in the most implicit form. But as we talk about the simplistic form, we also should talk about some of the more sophisticated examples. The attacker obviously have figured out many different variations of this attack. They don't just hit you one way, right? They have figured out 
the ways to attack it, many different situation, application situations and scenarios. So we've seen it across the board in GET request, right? The POSE request, right? Those are the HTTP methods. Uh, GET obviously is to read the data, POSE, potentially po send the data over to the web server, uh, PUT method as well. So methods uh, can be anything, right? Um, and we've also seen it in different payloads as well. So it's not just a text string or anything like that. Sometimes it occurs in JSON data within the little curly brackets and even XML data as well. The data type simply does not matter. As long as the application take in the input and passes it and then going into the file system, then you have a opportunity to be attacked, okay? Uh, we have also seen the attacker being very clever in rendering those encoding as well. For the purpose of encoding, um, you know, the encoding is really used to evade detection and filtering that developers often put in place. Uh, so the attacker would have to one up on the um, developer. Essentially, they, uh, they use the URL encoding very commonly and also the U Unicode encoding to evade the detection. Uh, and there are also double encoding as well. Even the percent sign itself is you know, encoded again and again. Um, and aside from all that, right, like there are also the operating system differences as well that sometimes throw a curveball at it. Meaning the uh, Windows and also Unix, one expects a forward slash, the other one expects a back, backslash. So those are the you know, some of the differences would matter a lot. Uh, and also the no character as well. When you put a no character in a file path, it basically terminate the file path right there. And if the, uh, if the developer are not expecting that, then it could render, you know, sort of a path traversal situation as well. Um, we have been talking so far about the relative path quite a bit, the dot dot slash, basically going up one directory level. But there are also absolute path as well. Uh, essentially, what it means is you assume that you can you are starting at the root, the top level of the directory path, and spe specify which directory you want to go into. Uh, and that has been seen in the wild, you know, with different attack types as well. So these are the attacker toolkit that they have been using all along, you know, on the path traversal side. So what can path traversal uh, do, right? Like for the attacker, what are they using it for? Well, the baseline here is that path traversal allow the attacker to free roam inside the, uh, the file system itself. So they can pinpoint a particular file and say, I want to read this file. Uh, and read and write uh, sometimes, you know, depending on the application, the possibility. Read is easy to understand. You're basically doing information theft, information disclosure. Uh, on the writing of information or updating of information, then it becomes a defacement um, potential. Uh, you can upload shell code to actually grant um, remote code execution uh, and manipulate different data inside the web server as well. So those are some of the damages that we've seen in previous attacks you know, these are the very typical way to go. Um, obviously, you know, just to uh, highlight here, right? Once you can write certain data to the file system, then a lot of times, um, if you write it to a particular location that the operating system will pick up, it may actually run the code. And that's usually the most hostile cases that could potentially happen. Here is an example that we have recently seen in the Netflix software package, you know, open source uh, package of Genie OSS. Um, so this is a package to uh, do orchestration on big data, like you know, a lot of databases, uh, big data, and so on. Uh, you can tell that hey, you know, if you can compromise one of these, you can potentially get access to very sensitive data, and the CVSS on this is very high, like nine point nine. Uh, indicating to all of us that hey, this is a very serious type of vulnerability, right? Like very, quite easy to exploit as well. What you can see here is that, um, you know, the attack strength basically looks like this. This is uh, 
a, a it allows the software allows a user to upload files so that the, the data inside the file can be inserted into databases. But the upload should be a file and not a full path or relative path to go to other places inside the operating system. So you can put it a, as a file and then the Netflix genie, you know, figure out where you should upload it to and pick up the file and processes it. However, you know, in this particular case, it actually upload dot, 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 slash uh, so many different layers to go above the current path, right? And then it comes back down to temp directory uh, and specif specifically call this pe.so file. If you don't recognize this p.so file, the .so file is a shared object. Uh, similar to the Windows DLL file, these are compiled binaries or compiled code that can be run inside the operating system. Uh, in, so the attack scenario is um, you know, generally with these .so upload with path traversal, you're uploading it uh, and then calling uh, and then tricking the operating system using the ld.so configuration to make the operating system run this compiled code, essentially leading to a remote code execution. So you're running this code in the targeted web app application server. And obviously it's very easy to exploit. That's why the ZVSS is 9.9. Um, and you can see the fix at the green portion of the slide, which is, you know, the team, uh, uh, this open source team actually um, went ahead and filter out the dot and the slash in this case, because it's only really expecting the file name, nothing else. Essentially anything like this is a bad case and it will get rejected out of the application. So that's a e pretty easy fix for this particular team. And um, also, you know, it's pretty easy to understand as well. Another example that emerged recently is about the checkpoint, which is a obviously a security appliance vendor, right? Uh, some of their products or a few of their products actually have web interface that are susceptible to path traversal uh, vulnerability. The CVSS is also relatively high. In this case, right, um, you can tell at the bottom here, it posts to a particular location and then the payload that are being sent, uh, the dot dot slash, and it particularly key, key off our target of file called the SC directory in the SE directory called shadow. Okay. This file contains the uh, password hash of the users inside the operating system. Uh, essentially the attempt here um, is to download that file, the information on that file inside that file, which is, which are the password hashes, crack the password hashes, then you can log into that box. Right. And this, why this is particularly bad is that checkpoint somehow, Right, decided that it's a good idea to run the web server as the root user. Okay, so very high privilege user, like super user essentially, and which is highly unusual, right? Like when you run a system or sorry, application like that, right? When a server, you should run it as the least amount of privilege you need. Well, generally, super user isn't it, right? Um, and you know, when you run it as root, then your blast radius is a lot bigger because root has many more privilege that other user would otherwise not have. And when attacker come and do the path traversal, when they are traversing the directory, they are traversing it as root user and not as a lower level user. That really is the problem. That, that's why this one has a potential to cause a lot of problems. Uh, in addition to that, right, what I personally find funny was that checkpoint in some of the documentation said, oh, you really want, you know, to, in order to uh, eliminate this particular uh, or work around this particular problem, you can use another security appliance sitting in front of the checkpoint appliance, right? It's like, hey, security appliance in front of a security appliance in front of another security appliance, how many more layers can you have, right? So that's that. And this, path traversal vulnerability is so becoming so common that Caesar and FBI recently have also issued guidance 
to software developers, right? Uh, particularly software vendors in that uh, in their target group to say, hey, you need to practice security by design and path traversal has become the top uh, exploit of vulnerability. And obviously CSER track these data. So they are in a very good perspective to know that organizations are getting hacked by the path traversal problems. Uh, so that's why they issue a, an alert to tell people to sort of smarten up in this particular area and avoid the path traversal problem as much as they can. The mitigation uh, here, right? There are going to be many different kinds of mitigation that we'll talk about, but the highlight before we jump into the most obvious one, which is like, hey, everybody understand, right? The dot dot slash is the uh, path traversal character. How do you defend that? Before we even get to that, right? I want to make sure that we cover this design practice, right? The design practice here is related to how this particular vulnerability came about in the first place, right? Anytime you mix your code and the data, bad things happen, right? Like in applications. So what we're talking about here is you want to try as much as possible in designing your software such that there are insulation or isolation between your user input, whatever the user put in, and the file system itself, right? Like because the file system is difficult to defend, you want to put certain level, level of isolation. Hey, if they don't touch each other, then the possibility of attack just got reduced a lot, right? Your attack path, you know, just got broken, right? So that's what we're talking about. And some of the design choices could be, right? What we're listing here at the bottom, right? Uh, if you are saying path ID equals one, that means I'm going to this particular path, right? Like path two is this one here. Uh, so essentially using a single digit to represent the path. Well, obviously single digit is very easy to validate. So you're eliminating the class of vulnerabilities altogether in this, you know, in this case. So path traversal would not exist here if you are designing your software appropriately. And obviously design being one thing, and in some cases it may not be possible, then you need to do some other defenses that we will also talk about uh, in, in upcoming slides as well. The other portion of your defense could be uh, locking down your environment. What I mean by that is, you know, you can sandbox your environment using Unix command like shimroot, which is a tactic to say, okay, this directory is now becoming our topmost directory. You cannot go above this directory. So you're sandboxing where the user can roam around to limit the potential damage, okay? So in, in other words, reducing the blast radius. Um, you can also use container to do the same thing, right? Like the Docker, Kubernetes, and so on, right? Um, it's effectively putting the sensitive information away from that container would be some of the choices here. Uh, aside from that, using a lower level account, right? to run your web process would be web server, the web uh, application environment would be the ideal state as well. Again, reducing the blast radius is what we're achieving, what we're trying to achieve here. By running a lower privilege user account, then you have less access to the operating system and also the file system and thereby reducing your blast radius. Um, and let's talk about the input validation. The obvious thing to a lot of people are going to be dot dot slash, right? Like, hey, how do we cut that off? Um, obviously, dot dot slash may not be needed. You know, for most cases, when you specify a file, yet the the attacker is using that. So, how do I block that from getting into my environment? Well, you know, in, in doing that, right, you is very prone to failure because there are many different variations of encoding. I'm gonna be honest, right? Like I'm, if you ask me, okay, go and filter out all different possible encoding scheme, I would have to think, and I would have to think about it for a very long time. And I don't know that this is anything that I would want to attempt, right? Like this is hard work. I call it the rocket science, right? Like I don't want to figure out rocket science, right? And the worst case here, right, is the you know sanitize, sanitization. If you are trying to clean out 
the dot dot slash and continue to operate that would be the worst because you know for example here the string here right if you put if the attacker put in the string and you're trying to sanitize all cases of dot dot slash even after you clean it out okay you're still left with dot dot slash why the black portion in here are left with the dot dot slash you're reassembling the string together so sanitization generally is very dangerous okay um and these filtering generally i would say i would de definitely call them you know very low effectiveness tactics then how do you actually do it right right you know this is where we talk about you know you need to know have some skills you need to know how to play the kung fu you know to um to be able to smartly validate the data what we're talking about is real path, right? Uh, the real path is a function that is common in many programming language platform like C, PHP, Python. Well, you're like, hey, I use you know some other languages. Don't worry, they all have the equivalent. It may be called a different name. You can easily Google real path and you know for example Node.js and stuff like that. You'll find your equivalent there very quickly. Um, they all do exactly the same function what it does is that it takes in the input a file path and it goes in and resolves all the symbolic link relative path and slashes and dot dot slash and so on and get you the end result essentially that is the real absolute canonical path of the string that you're putting into the field into the real path so what it means is it will get you okay after you resolve all those extra stuff where are you ending up right so it will tell you that but you may have a question here right like hey you know what does that mean um even if i can get the real path how do i use it to validate so you would want to establish where it is safe for example you expect the user to roam around in a particular directory that becomes your you know safe path and then you compare the path that is put in by the user after you run through real path and see if they match. If they match, that means where the user is going is still within your safe path. You are good. There is no traversal. The, the attacker is not luring your operating system to go to other parts of the file system. In other words, to put it in action, right? To put it in motion, this is a Python uh, example of what that could look like, right? You call the real path over here, okay? The real path over here, um, and you know, look for this match path, right? Which is over here, and the base path would be your safe path, okay? Essentially, you're comparing whether they are the same, okay? If they are the same, then this is returning true, which is means that is a safe path, okay? And um, if it is not safe, then you should definitely terminate the execution immediately, right? That means that the attacker have directed the path to be literally elsewhere, right? So um, that's what it means. And you can use this real path function to help you to validate whether the user is actually rendering a path traversal attack on your application or not. In summary, uh, path traversal can happen to any web-based application handling file path. Uh, and you want to design your web application to make data easy to validate, right? And possibly eliminate the, the path of attack altogether, right? Uh, defenses are more about, you know, the general hygiene, you know, locking down your environment. Those things helps a lot here. Um, one thing that I want to make sure that you understand is that don't try to just filter out the dot and the slash, right? A lot of uh, evasion, a lot of uh, encoding could happen over here that would lead to different evasion techniques. Um, the other side of it is use the real path, right? Function or the equivalent in your programming language in order to validate the path prior to the file system touching that user input. Those would be the summary to help you navigate around this particular vulnerability. With that, if you like what we have discussed here, please check into the SEC522 uh, class. This is the Defending Web Apps 
uh, API and microservices class, we talk about information such as what we have just talked about uh, in, in this video. And we run this class on a regular basis across the world, check up our class and check up where we're running it next. Maybe we're running it very close to you shortly.